Welcome to the 83rd episode of the MC Knitting Adventures podcast. My name is Colleen. And my name is May. Welcome to returning viewers. And for those of you watching us for the first time, we're so glad you could join us. We've got lots on the go. Colleen and I have been busy doing other things. We put an offer in the house. We want to tell you all about that <laughs> experience. And uh, that's the little delay on doing a podcast. But we're back and we're excited. And But before we talk about all that, Colleen will talk about what we're wearing. So first of all, let's talk about what May is wearing. So this this was, it was going to be a pair of socks, and then it became a cowl, and I think you're going to get more use out of the cowl. So this is May's favorite, Anguli Cowl by Hilary Smith Callis. And the yarn is Polka Dot Creek Self-Striping Sock Set in Jesse. So... And Jessie was my grandma's name. Jessie was so your that's grandma's part name. Of the exactly. Experience. It was very soft yarn, very it light. Is. And I blocked it. I must admit, I think this is the first one of those I blocked for it you. Feels like, and you know what? It feels a little different, different. than the others. Exactly. Yes. The yarn is beautiful, by the way. Now I have to tell you that the navy stripe, um, the color that came in this sock set was a bright pink, and we weren't sure whether you'd wear it. So I dug through my stash and found some navy. And the navy actually works really well. It kind of grounds the bottom, and I really think it looks great on you. And we talked about these colors. These colors we talked about that would be great in socks, but they would not really would be something that you and I would have picked for a cowl. But it, I, I think it worked out nice. The color looks great on you. Oh, thank you. You're always good with bright colors. So that's what May's wearing. And I'm wearing the Nurma Lintu by Heidi Allender. And this is in Life in the Long Grass Twist Sock, and it's yarn from Ireland. Oh, we like Ireland. We like Ireland. It's kind of cool we've been there, yeah. too. So, so that's very cool. So that's what we're wearing, and next we're going to talk about finished objects. My first finished object is the Hawthorne towel, and that is by Anna Campos. And the yarn that I used is Bernat premium and the reason for that is because I wanted to do something in Ukraine's colors we've talked about that before and here we are in this lovely brioche cowl so I'd taken a class about how to fix brioche mistakes I didn't make any mistakes while I was doing this but I'm really really happy with it so it's nice and squishy and lovely and you could either wear it with the blue on the outside or you can wear it with the yellow on the outside whichever color you choose so I now have that and I have the hat that I made before to go with it. And we're just hoping that the weather stays warm enough I don't have to use it. <laughs> but we'll bundle that up and we're... Yeah, the oh. weather is changing. Exactly. It is changing. Exactly. It, it was nice and warm in 18, 19, and then I talked about what the weather is going to be on and Monday. And then we're going to put our winter coats away. I know. Uh, I get excited when it's time to put the winter coats away. And Colleen just told me just There's a few minutes to ago. snow no. on Monday. How can that be? I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, I have two winter coats. One is a little lighter than the other, so I've decided I washed the other one, the one that's for minus 20 degree weather. And so I will is not Is that be the having... one that's like a spring coat? On the one side, yes. It's a down coat, and because it's as old as it is and my purse kept sitting it on that one side, it's kind of taken the feathers out of that side. <laughs> so you say it's kind of a spring winter coat. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, that's for sure. <laughs> Um, so that's my first finished object, and my next finished object is another cowl for me, and it's called A Little Bit Alexis Cowl by Romy Hill. And I can't say Alexis without going, Alexis. That's right. So anyway, what I used <laughs> was Comfort DK, and that's by Barocco. And I didn't do the entire thing because we know May doesn't like to use. I may make one for me. That's the whole thing, but for you, I didn't. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was a little bit of creative work. And if you feel that, it is nylon and um, acrylic. Nylon and acrylic. And I think that will sit nice. It'll just It'll be that. Really nice. Actually, it would look very yeah. nice with what so you've got I'll on. I'll this next podcast, see how okay, it looks perfect. on. Okay, It could be really nice. Exactly. I was wondering, I know we've talked about, what do you do with all the cat? Like, you know, now I have quite a collection of cowls. <laughs> yes, and you, you have quite a collection. Yes. And you talk about doing another one of these for you. Right. You know, at what point, do all knitters have, like, a collection of all this stuff? Like, what do you do exactly. with your stuff? Like, do you sell it? Do you give it as gifts? Do you just have a pile of stuff you've knitted? <laughs> like, I'd be interested to know that because yeah. um, I have no idea. We just keep getting bins and bins. Like, if you knit till you're 80, we're going to have to move out. Right. 
So I think mm. then we'll either sell. I know some people do it as a sample sale and they sell things that way. You and I talked about uh, an Etsy shop and right. doing some things for the with your miniatures and right. those kind of things. So we're still thinking. I don't about know, that kind of but it'd be interesting to see what you do. Yeah, and sometimes it's gifts. So that's what's going to happen with this other one. So this is the Otaiski, and that's by Laura Nelkin. It's one of the Lolo's Choice um, patterns. Now this one has little bits of color work, and I chose not to. Um, partly because of the way that it was done. Um, the yarn is Camper, Camper, mm -hmm. by Kelborn Willen, Kelborn Willen, Woolens. My mouth is not working. And so, Colleen likes to say the word camper because I like to camp. You do like to camp. <laughs> but That's right. You know what? We're going to put that 10 man tent up. Yes. Uh, this year. And I'm going to videotape it. We could be hilarious, <laughs> I just must say. That could go on, uh, you know, home videos. Exactly. Funniest home videos. Exactly. But anyway, it would be interesting to see as that. As long as you have that bleep button for when it oh, falls yeah, down. We'll need a bleep button for sure. <laughs> but back to knitting. Okay, so that's it. So it's a headband. And I think what I'm going to do, I don't know if my mom's watching, but I'm going to tuck it away from my mom. Um, and she doesn't need it right now, but sometimes the wind I think she'd her. like that. I think so. I yeah, think that it, would be good for her little ears. Yeah, And it's absolutely. a nice, how do you size this thing? Was it difficult to know how to size it? It was. I, There's not a lot of stretch in there. No, and I blocked it, and I know that you need to have it snug so it doesn't fall off, and my mom is tinier than I am, so I'm right. sure it's going to fit her. Yeah, okay, exactly. well, there you go. And I may make one for myself, but I don't need to do that right now. Um, so those are my finished objects, and May, finished objects for you. I do have, well, I don't really have. Oh. <laughs> I lied. <laughs> I've been working on something that's not really finished, and because we've been busy with other things, as you know. Right. Um, but, you know, we'll talk about those in our craft. Perfect. So next we're going to talk about works in progress. My first work in progress is the Down by the Creek by Cozy Up Knits. And so they have, so Cozy Up uh, Knits is, they have a podcast, um, they're from Grand Prairie, Alberta. I mention them all the time. And they have a spring cotton make-along. And so what I wanted to do, I got some cotton and I got it from Creek Garden Crafts. And so I got the main. So this is 100% Pima cotton sock. It's brilliant to knit with. I got that. And then I got a pastel mini set. Sorry for the crinkling. Now, I didn't use all of it because this is very long. And I had to do a little bit of designing myself. So, so when this this long, do you wrap it around a hundred times? No, or? actually, you know, I I took out one color and I didn't make it as big. Oh my gosh! That's it. So it it wraps around nicely, just once around. Oh, These really? things have to be longer. Oh okay. Yeah. So anyway, I'm really happy. The pattern's nice. The lace is nice. It's not a finished object because I haven't woven in the ends. I haven't blocked it. I'm not going to try and block it aggressively. Um, partly because cotton doesn't block aggressively, but I just need to open up the well, lace, lace a little bit yeah. and it'll be good. Beautiful colors. Nice and I'm, light. I really know. nice. I'm really happy with it. Yeah. So that was the whole idea is to make something that was light right. and lovely. So um, I was really, really happy with the yarn as well. Yeah, so, it feels nice too. And, nice and light. Penny was great. Um, so she does the dyeing in the Pima cotton and I had mentioned some other colors and she was explaining why that might not work so we did a really good job back and forth and i am really really happy with how it worked so that's my first uh work in progress good my next work in progress is a pair of socks finally a pair of socks for me now how did i decide what kind to do because i ordered some felici it was on sale um so I decide on sale and this is their fingering weight um, striping sock yarn and it's called uh, Rustic Cabin. And I knew Cabin, camping, camping, camping the theme that's here. That's right, that's right. So I'm doing these two at a time um, and I can do that. These come in 50 gram balls. And if you haven't watched Colleen's two at a time sock tutorial, you might want to check that out. Exactly. Uh, you did a great job of explaining oh, thank all you. that. Yep. I'm really, really happy with how that came out. May was really good. We kind of had to sit side by side to make sure mm -hmm. we got all the instructions. But this is going to be nice. And yes, yeah, they're the, the colors one. for camping. And they're cool. They'll be great. Exactly. Yeah, keep the, the mosquitoes. Fall, when we go from, in the fall, we go yeah. camping or yeah. Or keep the mosquitoes away. Yeah. And it is, the pattern is Prairie Sock 
by uh, KF Jones of the Bakery Bears. Now, I wasn't sure whether the pattern would work with the self-striping, and it really does. And you don't have a pair of these socks no. yet, and I think you're gonna like how they feel on your yeah, feet. I really like them. The texture there, yes, the little the texture. texture is nice. Exactly, I think you're gonna really like that. So finally, a pair of socks. I, that was the third thing of yarn. Not that, that I don't I, have any. You no, you do. a number of socks. I know, I know, but you know, you've got lovely feet and they need yeah. to stay warm, so there you go. <laughs> All right, my next work in progress is the Hitchhiker Beyond, and that's by Martina Beb. And I have knit a couple of hitchhikers and always wanted to try this. Now the yarn that I'm using is called uh, Ravenswood Farmer Com Fiber Company from Nova Scotia. We're all over the place. Um, and this is their 85-15% Reno Nylon and it's called Happy Yarn Day. So we got this in Ottawa. I don't know if you'll remember, but we did get... Uh, I know we say this all the time, but yeah. how does one remember like your... Exactly. But anyway, Ottawa you said? Ottawa. So this feels lovely. And this is gonna be a long and skinny, which I like, and it's got the little bumps. Now, this is different than the Hitchhiker. Um, and that's good, I wanted to try the other one. Um, this kind of, you knit it in one direction and then you have to do something different and paid for a pattern, so I can't tell you all that. But I'm really happy. It pooled a little bit here, but I'm not worried about it. Yeah. It's okay. Love the very colors on this yarn. Again. Exactly, it's really, really nice. nice. So this is like, Oh, it's a self-striping kind of yarn? Well, it is? isn't. I think it's more of variegated yarn. It's not okay. self-striping. Nice. Yep. I love the, the colors of that. That would be nice. Know. Kind of reminds me of Ottawa, those colors. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Maybe because of the Ottawa River or something. Is there Maybe. an Ottawa River? Yes, or, there is. Exactly. River Grand or something, is it? I don't know. I should check my geography. <laughs> <laughs> it is the capital of Canada. I should know that. That's all right. The river runs through. <laughs> That's okay. But we like Ottawa. But we did that cycle what by is, the Rideau Canal. That's what it is, there the we Rideau go. Canal. Yep. And that's where the ice skate is. Yes, and, and absolutely. that was absolutely beautiful in Ottawa, wasn't I it? I know. And we I miss our adventures. we got to get going. And, you know, COVID coming back again and another bear. Uh, yeah. we just got to get used to... Uh, we're still wearing masks here, of course. Exactly. They're not mandated, but mm -hmm. uh, most people are still wearing a mask, which is right. great because uh, they're saying that's what you should do. Right. Um, but, again, it's just that little hesitation after being... I mean, you may feel the same way after right. you've been hunkered down for two years, just venturing out as a exactly. little but we're going to do that we're going to some yarns um thing we bought tickets for that right we got a miniature thing on the go we've got a yarn thing on the go so it's just we're just kind of dipping, dipping our, our big toe in yeah but <laughs> exactly. but we're, we're excited to share that with exactly. you in our little excursion so watch for that exactly so my last work in progress and i have to giggle at myself about this is the lemmy cowl giggle giggle <laughs> um, the yarn, Laura Nelkin, the yarn is Madeline Tosh and it's called Twist Light. Is there beads in this? Just, there are beads in this. I knew it. But the funny thing is, I had made one that was a single wrap. And when I ordered this kit, it was on sale, so that helped pay for shipping. And it, you could either make a cowl and a pair of small socks or whatever. I just decided to make a double cowl, is what I did. So what's the giggle part here? Well, because I knit the pattern. Oh. And because when you look at this, it looks like you knit from bottom to top and the last little bit you're going right. to put the beads on. Oh, no, you don't. So I'm oh. thinking, why am I putting beads on now? Like, I'm not understand. Anyway, so. <laughs> you put the beads on the top? No, I didn't do it wrong. I just didn't understand what I was doing. Oh. So the way that it works, and it makes a whole lot more sense, is you're actually hold on, okay. is you're actually knitting. Um, you start knitting at the top and you work your way down. It makes sense to do that because you get the beads in place, and then you can just use however much of this to knit I the see, way around. I see. So I'm really happy with it. Look at that color. Oh my goodness! It's a very rich purple. It is beautiful. Fully your color. Yes, it's called Eleven Dark is what it's called, and I love it. Yep. So, and the beads give a little bit of bling, and I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to keep knitting around in that, oh, and so it will be nice good. and soft too. It's exactly, good. it will block really, yeah, really nice. Very nice. So I'm good happy job. about I love, that. I really love the color. It's a very rich purple. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not royal purple, but it's no. uh, deeper than a royal I purple. I know. You know. I'm really, really happy. Yeah, with it, so. nice. Sometimes you just have to go with the color you love so much. Yeah. Um, so those are my works in progress. And May, works in progress for you? I do. I'm going to talk about those in my little craft section thing. Okay, perfect. So next we're going to talk about a craft adventure. Well, um, 
before we talk about our craft adventure and before Colleen talks about what she's been up to, we really haven't been doing a lot of crafts because we kind of got sidetracked because of me, usual. <laughs> um, but I got thinking that we needed to buy a new house. Or, okay. Uh, <laughs> she did. <laughs> uh, condominium with a pool. And I thought, oh, it'd be nice to have a pool. It'd be nice that. So we did. We went and looked around and we saw this one location that was absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. So um, we, and you know, with that comes that you've got to get your house ready. You've got to get sorted. And so there's no time for crafting. No. There was no time, all. which is unfortunate because I kind of missed it. Yeah, me too. And what we did was, um, so we got our house ready so that we could put it up for sale when we're ready. The whole housing market has been changed since we actually began the house purchasing like back in the day back in the day you're it's right. very different now so we put an offer into this place that needed a lot of work mm -hmm. like it needed carpets it needed a new kitchen it needed painting mm -hmm. wallpaper removing mm -hmm. um it needed all this work and Colleen was so good she just kind of went along with me went okay you know <laughs> we, we can do we this can do this was fine and, mm -hmm. which is great you did that mm -hmm. put an offer in and then um we offered like a hundred thousand dollars more than what they were asking yes we did and the house went for two hundred and thirty five thousand dollars more than what they asked for I know. and so then i think after that it was a little disappointing mm -hmm. yes not to say that it wasn't disappointing you handled it well mm -hmm. very disappointing and we thought this market is too weird like it's too, because you can't sell your house and all that kind of, yeah. as you know, if you've been in the housing yeah, market. You have to just, buy before you can sell. and yeah. yeah, you can't sell our house and then think, oh, we'll just wait to something because we'd be homeless. Right. So there's all those things to consider. And that I might be upset about. Yeah. I don't want to be homeless. Yeah. We could live in the car. That's right. We could. I don't know how we fit all the yard yeah. in the car. As long as we have each other, I think we'd be fine. We'd be good. Yeah. So anyway, you know how that consumes you for over like a month, I guess, or so. Yeah. It just consumed us and all those decisions you had to make and all the, the decisions I had to make at getting the house ready and uh, and all the things that we talked about, about if we got this house, what we would have to where do would to we it. Put the furniture? Where would we put the furniture? You have to get a plumber. You have to get, oh. Anyway, I'm so glad to be back. <laughs> We've missed you. I've missed doing the podcast. Exactly. And I'm glad to be back. All I want to do now is just sit down, relax, do my crafts do some tours so anyway what were you up to when you could have squeezed in a little bit now well it's funny when you talk about squeezing in so what <laughs> I was squeezing in were miniature things because they don't take a long time to do so May had mentioned that she wanted some more linens for the her wee beds for her miniatures and so I ended up being able to make a couple of these there's a thread we don't want so I'll let you hold that up so there them. is like a comforter and a pillow and there's another set so that's for some of her single beds yep and I could just sell these uh however I'm going to sell them I exactly. haven't decided how that's going to work yet exactly yeah. so we I so, did a couple of those and then are these hard to like this is this hard to do you know what it's not hard to do it is it's like I use the same size of needles that I use for socks. If I'd never knit socks before, that would make me crazy. Oh, okay. But I can do that. I almost was able to do it in a night. Oh, okay. And well, that gets good. you a little blanket. So this would go behind, uh, this is for a blanket for a bed? Do you think? It could be at the end of a bed. It could be right. on a couch. It could be all kinds of things. Yeah, that'll be nice. Just a little yeah. added uh, yeah. texture. And on that, it. this yarn, um, I can't remember the name of it, but it comes from Michael's. And you get 600 and some Those meters. Those are expensive. It's not expensive. 600 and some meters in a ball. So it's a little bit uh, finer than sock yarn. Yeah. But it feels like it's got such a nice yeah, feel to it. It's nice. got a little bit of a halo to Is it. Is this it's for really, baby really nice. things? Is this for like a baby jacket? No, or it wouldn't no. be. No? No, unless you were doing something that yeah. was fingering weight. So well, um, I appreciate that. It's very cute. We'll no see fun. how that goes. Exactly. So that's what I've been doing. And now, May, how about you? Well, um... I was work be like I said there wasn't hasn't been much time in no. between so in between when we've had a few minutes you really have to I kind of like I don't know if you're maybe not the same with knitting you know or painting you got to kind of be in the space yes I understand saying, what you're I know saying. you're not so much with knitting but with sewing you definitely have to be in a I sewing do. space that's right and I have to kind of be in a miniature mm -hmm. space because once I get involved in it I'm right in it right but then I can't just do it for five minutes or ten minutes it's something right. I've got to just like yeah, exactly bump. so on my little um five minutes here and there oh I made a little uh oh there's a little uh, sandwich in there I made she must have been hungry <laughs> <laughs> I made a little picnic basket I wanted to see how that worked exactly you've got to show the fabric in yeah, there yeah. that is amazing so we bought fabric for that mm -hmm. 
Um, I don't know if you remember the last podcast or so we showed our fabric that yes, we bought. And so that was exactly. part of what I was visualizing is a little picnic basket. Right. So what I did was just get some wood, mm -hmm. wrapped some string around it, and then uh, it is beautiful. put it inside. It was my first little experiment. Wow. I got the leather stri strips, right. the leather you buy in the dollar store. Oh, wow. Just glued that on, yeah. Exactly. Now, I'm not finished. Is... I'm going to put some little hooks in here. Cut right, that, out that makes stuff, sense. Right. And I want to put dishes So talented, in. that's for sure. And then I made... Um, a sub sandwich before. I was going to suggest we have subs for dinner. Oh, that'd be good. <laughs> um, that one. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm going to put some things in the picnic, miniature right. things in the picnic right. basket. And so that's what I've been kind of doing. I mean, it doesn't look like much. Oh, my but gosh. No, it does. So, yeah. And as you know, before I made these tomatoes and I made this little crate, I yeah, wanted to just see size wise. I'm going to change it up. That's how I work. Right. I don't know if you work that way, but I work where I am. Um, I'd make something. I get to see the sizes and what other right, materials right. I can use. So I'm mm -hmm. going to fix that up. But it's a little crate of Very tomatoes. Nice. And those little tomatoes go up, like I've showed you before. With a little exactly. Mic. But I didn't do these and while we were house hunting. <laughs> that would have been too. Easy. There we go. But what I do want to say is people have asked me how I do my tomatoes with the FEMO, like polymer clay. Polymer clay. Or, mm -hmm. um, and I do use FEMO, so that's why I say FEMO. But yep. it is polymer clay, and you can use any type you like. Right. And what they do to make their tomatoes, the insides like this, is in FEMO or polymer clay, what they do is they make a lot of canes. Right. And when you make canes, um, you can make like oranges. And so you t add the colors in and then you okay. roll it and then okay. you slice that, it. That's making sense. And it's, for me, you need a lot of patience. It's right. time consuming. Right. You need a ton of colors. You need this, that, and the other thing. And the product when you're done it looks amazing right I personally didn't want to take the time to do that so I I just did my own thing and I made a little video on how I right. did my tomatoes I'm not saying it's the right way to do right. it probably the canes are the right way to do it I don't know if there's a right and wrong I don't know no, but I'll show you so. if you want to see that video I'll put a video up of me uh, probably next week how I did my tomatoes. Now, I didn't do this video in the, when we were house hunting. I no. had done that previously. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but You know, I was just thinking. You know how you say there's more than one way. Yeah. You know the expression, there's more than one way to skin a cat? Yeah. Why do you say that? <laughs> yeah, why do like, you? Like, that's gross. I know. Where did <laughs> I that come know. from? I don't know. I we think should we'll maybe have to research talk to Dr. That. Google. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we will research that. I think there's more that. than one way to make a tomato. Yeah. <laughs> that's better. <laughs> anyway, I just did a video on how I do it. And, mm -hmm. you, you know, you can... See how it's done or right. whatever if you're interested in that kind of thing. Anyway, that's what we've been up to. Uh, back, I feel back kind of grounded, right. kind of sorted. Right. Got the house thing out of my head. Mm -hmm. Kind of. No, yeah. no, I think it's. I think we're done because the housing market is just crazy and yes. I don't know where it's going. And right. oh, That's in Ontario anyway. I think right. it's the same all over Canada. I would I imagine. Think. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Can you imagine putting your house up for sale and getting two hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars more than what you asked for? I can't. I cannot. I would if you could. If I knew that, I would put it up for sale. <laughs> <laughs> but then we'd have no place to live. That's right. Car. I told you the car. You might need two cars. Yeah. So uh, anyway, that's what we've been up to. Not too much, but um, it's glad to be back and glad to to see you again. So we'll. Um... So next, we're going to talk about our souvenirs. May, souvenirs for you. What did you end up with? Well, um, usually I don't have souvenirs, but I'm pretty excited about this. Um, I got this for my birthday. It's a mm -hmm. miniature book. It is. My mom said, get something for me from Amazon. So Yeah, that was nice of your mom to do that. Exactly. So thank you, Maureen, if you're watching, if you ever watches. I don't know, but I'm really, <laughs> really looking forward to that. It's all miniature food and how to do that. I know. You know what I like about this picture is the fact that you don't realize how miniature this is until you see the fork beside it. Yes. Like they, they have it so it puts it in scale. Right. I, I'm just so excited to start looking into that book. But yeah, that's there exciting. There you go. And then I got, Colleen was nice enough to buy me these two books. I haven't really even looked into those ones, but they had five stars on Amazon. So I don't know. So cool. there's a part one and a part two. Right. Yes. So I'm looking forward to delve into those. That will be great. Yes. That'll be exciting. So those are May souvenirs. And now for me, so we talked earlier about these socks being knit two at a time. 
Now, sometimes you want to knit your socks two at a time, but you don't want to do it with magic loop. So what can you do? So what I ordered was I got some Knit Picks Sunstruck Double Pointed Needle Set. I heard that these were good needles. So there's the set. It's always cheaper to buy the set. And then I decided to get another pair of 2.25. Have you used them yet? I have not. So now what I'm going to do, because I still have more socks to make for people in the family, is instead of doing them two at a time like this, I'm going to do them concurrently. And what that means is you have two sets of, I'm going to use double points, you have two sets of double pointed needles and you knit, maybe you knit the rib on one and then you knit the rib on the other. And then you knit a couple inches on one and a couple of inches of the other. Because the nice thing about two at a time is that you never have second sock syndrome. You're like, I, you know, I know this is going to take a little longer because I'm doing two at the time, but then they're both done. Same thing with this. You knit, you knit, you knit, you knit, oh, you knit, you knit. And right. so concurrently just means at the same time. So by the time you're finishing the toe on one, you're ready to finish the toe on the other. That's a great idea. Have exactly. you done that? You haven't done that before. I have, but I didn't necessarily, no, I have. I've got, I've got a couple sets of needles and I did it that way. Good. So that's fantastic. So that is my souvenirs. Yeah. And thank you so much for watching. We love when you spend time with us. If you like what you're seeing, give us a thumbs up, comment down below. If you haven't subscribed, consider doing so because we really like doing this. We made it over a thousand. We're just trying to get our watch hours in um, and we like doing this for you.